Hi my friend, we are back with the episode 7 of our Scotch Gambit series, this time we discuss what happens if Knight takes pawn. Knight takes pawn, takes pawn has two main continuations, two main responses. Bishop e3 is one, the other one is Knight e5. I don't recommend Knight e5, I recommend Bishop e3 and I will go through this, um, but I will also show what happens with Knight e5 and why I don't recommend it. So. Bishop d3, the idea is to develop and then uh, have a superior position and win. So, but of course, you have some difficulties about to getting back the pawn and developing quick. But um, we will see how to do it. Here, black can go wrong easily. For example, black can say that, okay, I will grab this knight with check. But then this end of the day, you are attacking the bishop and f7 spot cannot be defended both in the same time. Um, eventually, black loses the bishop. So, let's say black doesn't blunder that badly. Doesn't blunder that badly. But what is the idea here? Also, black cannot play some stupid move. Just to show you, there are, of course, there are lots of tactics here. But just to show you something, for example, if we play some stupid move, we just exchange everything. And this position is completely winning for white. I mean, uh, white has um, no queen, centralized queen. And additionally attacking, uh, additionally developed bishop can castle either side. And that's amazing. So uh, let's go forward. And in this position, let's say, what is a good move for black either queen e7 or queen f6 are good of course black can also play knight e6 to defend the bishop and retreat the knight but here already loses the pawn but uh, it's uh, not just pawn also the position bishop is defenseless should you now do something but you grab the pawn and the uh, structure of black is dead so let's go to the main line First queen e7, I quickly show you what happens here. You grab the knight and then takes back with the pawn. Taking with the bishop again was useless. We will uh, reach a similar position. Uh, takes with the pawn, castle. And then black cannot grab this pawn. Why? Think about it yourself. Black cannot develop knight here. Why? Because we simply push the pawn and gain loss of tempo. Black's best move is to develop knight h6 knight h6 but then you simply develop your pieces of course you could have cast a shared d pawn but it's not important uh, you will win it later knight h6 just shows that how bad is the development of black and how behind is black in development next later you will capture that pawn and this is a very easy line to um, play against queen e7 so another direction is to play instead of queen e7, play queen f6. This is more challenging because it enables black to play knight e7. Again, the idea is very similar. First, this time kick the queen away. After queen goes away, then only then castle. And the idea here is to just develop with uh, tempos. Of course, you can um, go after the pawn, but uh, don't hurry. You will um, win that pawn later bring the rook to the open file this is very important in uh, generally in italian games you want to or the royal Lopez, you want to lift the rook and the rook is not there to defend the e-pawn it uh, it's a side uh, roll of rook but you want to lift it so after castles bring the knight out and uh, here of course you can attack the pawn but you don't need to hurry first limit the bishop because if you play it uh, prematurely then it's not very good for example can kick your rook and you don't want to uh, see this situation uh, limit the bishop and finally black should try to develop don't capture that pawn easily kick the bishop away and only then capture that pawn because if you capture that pawn here is uh, these are all intuitive right it grabs with the bishop and has a very healthy pawn and that's it but if after that move you kick the bishop first and then grab the pawn the structure is not that healthy as before bishop is not defending the structure should grab it with a queen um, grabbing with the pawn is definitely not good right no uh, this is uh, both pawns are weak and both of them are gonna a uh, white will end up a pawn up instead of being pawned on so grabs with the queen and now this is where you have advantage of development advantage 
you can maneuver your knights for free attacking by going to the queen and this is the dream position for Italian players or Rui Lopez players to have both knights on g3 and f3 and here for example what black can do can pin you or not but this pin doesn't help because you have a beautiful lift of rook uh, of course you can also push to this uh, bishop that's also a move of um, but lifting the rook is more romantic and this is what you want to do in italian or roy lopez so bishop should uh, uh white should black should give up the bishop uh notice that in this line that i'm showing i didn't take that uh, deep on black keeps advantage of uh, having extra pawn you could have win that pawn earlier but i am uh, showing a line that gives white a lot of development advantage and i want to show you what happens if for example black plays one careless move like this one in this case first you kick this knight away this is important uh, intermediate step because this knight defends many squares that you want to use later or can later join as a defender so black should uh, uh, go and somewhere with the knight uh, going to the e7 is not good because blocks the black queen and you will see why it's bad soon and here at this position attacking the bishop is not uh, very healthy for black because this bishop wants to move actually to d3 because uh bishop together with the queen attacking to h7 a spot and this is a deadly threat for black black should defend against this black can offer queen exchange but white does, uh, doesn't care just accept that and then wins everything in black territory and this is end of a day for black so uh, this is my recommendation bishop d3 and let's go back to the uh, other line that i wanted to talk about is knight takes e5 i don't recommend it because first move queen e7 is force and is easy to see attacking the king and you grab the pawn and grabs the pawn and you have only one move king f1 any other move is dead loss and here black's best response is the counterintuitive move of queen takes c2 exchanging queens and after all black is uh Oh, sorry here black cannot capture that rook after we capture black first develops the knight and then captures the rook after all black is up a pawn but his knight is uh, trapped our knight is also trapped it's not easy to bring our knight out and it's not a good position but of course black can go wrong for example just to show you fun, fun line grab this pawn with check uh, with uh, knight and go greedy and then here is um, where you start to shine because first you attack the queen defender of the knight and defend your bishop and a queen should eye on knight but then it doesn't help this check is a killer you grab the rook and the knight cannot come out in return knight of white can go out also if black tries to be like a sneaky instead of directly defending knight indirectly defending for example this uh, this one is very easy let's say uh, queen h4 is more complicated attacking to f2 spot again queen e2 is the end of the day because uh, defense f2 spot is not checkmate anymore and uh, the same idea holds uh, attacking to the knight knight takes you take and knight of black cannot come out but knight of white will escape that was it i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye